Hey guys, it's Chris, and just when you th and just when you think it's peaceful, the Jelly of the Month Club shows up. This is something from Mr. Q. Hold and modify. So I got some work to do. Comes with a free Amiga 3000 replacement light. We're gonna fix that. So let's uh, get to the elephant in the room. This is a re Amiga 3000 uh, that was created by Mr. John Hertel. Um, what happened was. Kevin bought this for many hundreds of US dollars uh, a couple years ago and it's been on his channel so you can check it out, hold and modify. Something happened to it and it stopped working. So he had a 060 in it and a Picasso for your mom. Anyway, he shipped it back to John. John uh, swapped it out with another board or something to that nature. Good God. And when he got it back, it arrived DOA. So here I am. I know absolutely nothing about the Re Amiga board, except they put different sims on it and it has some interesting uh, Super duper ROM that you can do 3 1 and 3 2. So here's Kevin's Re Amiga board. So it has uh, really good capacitors. They're all organic polymer. That's top top shelf stuff. We have a Super Buster 07. We have a Ramsey 04. Uh, Super DMAC 02. Normal, 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 normal. 8372AB. Uh, Amber 03 with a puffed out socket. Why is the socket puffed out? this side. Do you see that? She's got bow legs. Alright, so we got more flux than Jesus made wine here, so we're gonna have to clean that up. But, I mean, flux doesn't prevent working. That's no problem. I'm gonna look and just double check some shizzle to see what's going on. So first thing I'm gonna do is I got some AM 27C400s from AMD. I'm gonna write a set of 3.2.1 ROMs for the Amiga 3000 just to make sure it works because I need them for my machine underneath. We're set for V-Sync, not TIC. Interesting. I guess because it's using an aftermarket power supply. This is set for, I don't know, FPU is on external. CPU speed 25. So I did get notice from John just to remove this jumper and I can use normal ROMs. So I'm going to do that before I forget. It is so weird working on a new board. NTSC Crystal. What I'm going to first do is I'm going to put Diagram in it. And we're going to see what the hell it does. So I put Diagram in one pin back, like a 12 and a 600. On a 40 pin ROM. It has no battery in it. It's going to open Diagram over here. I'm going to make it big. Because I have to press a key if it works. One mouse hooked up. Nothing in the way. Let me close the knife. Here we go. What we're looking for is the diagram screen. I'm getting diagram over here, but not here. That's weird. I gotta hit a key here. Uh, click the right mouse button. Alright, so I got purple nothing on this screen and diagram here. I'm gonna turn it off. I'm gonna turn it back on. Diagram is loading over here. I'm going to click a left mouse button this time. Hold down any key or click the right mouse button. Clicking the left mouse button will what? I don't know. Alright, let's do audio tests. Play a test module. Oh my god. That sounds like shit. Making sure it's not my connectors or anything. All right, enough of this. On a plus note, the board diagrams to serial. So something in video. There's a low res picture. Graphics test in action on RGB. RGB is fracked. Let me turn it off. Amber in the disabled RGB position. That is up. I just rest the power supply on top of the SCSI. Just in case, I'll put a scotch plate over top of it. Alright, 
graphics test again. Nope. Screen RGB test. Well, that didn't do nothing. Serial's working. The RAM count says 4096K RAM, or 4096 RAM, chip 2 megs, 6830, serial 9600. Great. System info. We're not getting any red. What the hell? It's these two megs of chip RAM. We don't. We have all yellow. We don't have any red, which is good. Why can't I get an easy one? Why can't there be simple ones? So it's not ROMs. Everything's seated. It's display. Something's goofed with the damn Denise. I don't know. I'll have to pull all that out and double check it. Reset bus work. Reset bus works. Audio test. I'm playing the test module. It's supposed to be way better than that. So, number one, number two, number three, four. Turn them off. Channels are working. Fourth channel, fracked. Three. Shit. Two. One. Filter's working. Lights coming on for the filter. So now we have no fast RAM. If you're not getting any graphics, that's the first thing you check. Well, you get a crusty spider or something underneath here. That's a spider egg. That's, that's great. Let's just, let's just do this. I need that. Look at that crap caught off my hands. Good enough. Nice new socket there. That makes life a little better. This has some goop on the chip. And the chip itself is clean and nice. All looks good. Let's see what happens now. If I do nothing, I should see, I should have seen all this stuff over here. I'm hitting the flicker fixer. Flicker fixer's working, but I'm not getting any graphics. Is it a bad Denise? This sucks eggs. So we're gonna bust out my bag, my zigzag bag here. Super Denise from my Amiga 3000. See, nobody's getting this one, but I will use it for a test. It's the exact same chip. Look at that. That's counting. There we go. This should not be showing. This should be over here. Another Denise in. Alright, three Denises. This one's brand new NOS. Diagram pops right up. This, that's what it's supposed to do, but it's already supposed to show me my screen. White screen. No. Graphics test. Test picture in low res. Nothing. Alright, let me get this Denise out and put the original Denise back in. I don't know what these lights are. Hey, it's a couple hours later. I was cleaning the board and just happened to notice the CPU. I took a photo here. Notice anything weird? Right around here. Even double checked myself in the old Sprint Layout Viewer on the CPU pins to check, make sure that these two pins are not bonded. And they are not. They go to different locations. So, I don't know if that has any weirdness that bad. I mean, it did boot diagram, but something is just not allowing video. I don't know. It is currently 6.17 p.m. I've been working on this for two hours since 4 o'clock, 4.15, 7 o'clock. I fired down a Chipotle burrito to get the attitude down. I was a little hangry. Um, I, again, fired this up, and I noticed something weird on the audio portion, like the cap isn't connected. It's got no solder in it. I guess, I don't know. So I'm going to zap that in. Now, we're soldered in. It's hard for me to diagnose a new board because it's new. Clicking the right mouse button, we have nothing. Let's do the audio test. Play test module. A little better. This is not a re Amiga diagram. This is an original Amiga 3000, but the large majority, except the RAM stuff, should be the same. Layout maybe a little different looking in a little ways. 
with some extra ROMs or I don't know battery for the most part it looks identical to the original 3000 okay so I'm back with Mr. Kevin's board just to test I did fix his LED that was all budged out I had to scrape a little bit of copper away it was a cold solder bust so now I can actually see if I'm getting a low high low high good thing kickstart 3.2 ROMs are in um, set on V-Sync for the Amiga kit external power supply for the 3000. The video signal came on but we got nothing on the display. Same thing as Diagram. When we had Diagram in we could see Diagram on the serial bus. However, nothing. Back to the drawing board on that. This is probably going to have to be shipped to Mr. Hertel because it's his board and I'm just being his remote hands. I'm still waiting for some further assistance or ideas before I make a, a shipment. Hey guys, it's Chris and this is a date you guys apparently have all been waiting for. Uh, several months ago, I started working on Mr. Kevin's Re Amiga when he shipped it to me. I reached out to John uh, afterwards and we talked offline. We tried a couple various things. Nothing really seemed to help. So John said he's going to send me another board. That was two months ago. It is currently the beginning of August, and thanks to the wonderful people at the United States Postal Service and the U.S. Customs Enforcement, it was held in customs for probably a month. But enough of that. This goes down here, and this was the packaging. Now, I cut the tops, but I haven't actually done anything with it. Wanted you all to get the whole experience with me. All right, here we go. Oh, we have a Mauser box. And we have a board in paper. And another board for just in case. <laughs> okay, so carefully, I'm going to sit this here. And this is a Re Amiga board. Just about three or four solder points, as you can see. Beautiful job. You know where this would look nice? Right up there with the Commodore lights. It's got a big scratch in it right here. On U891 is all cut open. Okay, well, you know, it's pretty. I like looking at it. This will be so sexy in a bright purple. Man, thank you Mr. John Hertel for this. Now, inside of the bag. We have a no-chipped Amiga Re Amiga 3000. Hey, Kevin's board here. I'm not stab myself in the face because I moved too far, and this daggone prison bracelet snapped off the desk, hit me square in the ear. That was nice. So what needs to be done is I need to just plug this into here, and we're done. I need to transplant all the chips and things from here to here. So John actually socketed the four buffers and the three RAMs for the amber. That's cool. Here is the old and here is the new. We're going to be using a combination of the PLCC, the Gennard, and even the old school, whatever they're called, the puller, chip puller. Paula, double check. Paula Denise, odd, even, scuzzy. Uh, what's this guy? DMAC, Gary, Buster, Ramsey, Agnes, Amber. Got him. Chip Ram. Got it. Gals, one, two, three, four. Got it. Nothing else? Okay. Plugging in the motherboard. Putting in the daughter card. Even though I believe the Re Amiga 3000 does not require you to have a daughter board in for testing, but. You always want to have it ready. So, my power supply is hooked up. Let's hit the button. And ha la la! Thank you, Mr. John Hertel. You, sir, rock. So that is basically it. That is all I am doing to this board. I am not going to mess with it at all. It came up with a 3.9 ROM. 
Um, do I even want to do the three one three twos? I will message Mr. John Hertel and see what he says to do. I don't know. Maybe I will or give these to Kevin for swapping out himself. The point is it's working right now as is. So that is all I got. I'm going to ship this down to Mr. Kevin. Probably by the time this video airs, you will probably have two, three, four, five videos on Mr. Kevin's channel, Hold and Modify, um, the great Q himself. How do I do that? Uh, yeah, the great, the great Q himself. That's my Masonic pyramid. Sorry, and uh, we'll we'll see how it goes. But special thanks to Mr. John Hertel for sending me this spare board. Got a little scrape in it. I'll probably hang it on the wall for some homage. And maybe one day if I need to feel like I'm not doing it, a couple thousand solder points, Helmet of Goober will just destroy me. So that is all I got for now. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more updates in the future. And as always, hope you learned something.